world, it's me, Dr. Reins, and today we're gonna be talking about the newest addition to Skullgirls Mobile, uh, gameplay-wise, I guess. It is, or they are, prestige abilities. Uh, let's just get right into it. But before we do that, I want you to keep this statement in mind. Every character has a unique prestige ability that exemplifies their innate traits and playstyle. What are prestige abilities? The easiest way to put it will be to say that prestige abilities are active skills unique to every character, but that can be acquired by every variant. How to unlock prestige abilities? To unlock a prestige ability, you'll need another copy of the variant that you're trying to unlock the prestige of. Keep in mind that a character and a variant are not the same thing. For example, every star child is Annie, but not every Annie is a star child. Assuming that you have at least one copy of the character that you want to unlock the prestige for, you then have to go into the power up menu. Here you can see which variants you can sacrifice to power up the prestige of your desired character. To make things even easier, you can tap in the little icon in the bottom right corner and it will show you exactly which variants will give you prestige points. After that, you just select them and then use the power up function. Are you sure you want to sacrifice this fighter? This cannot be undone, yes. And prestige ability, now or never, upgraded. Also some skill points. Remember that every variant of every character has a prestige ability to unlock and they all unlock in the same way. You select which duplicates you want to sacrifice and then you click on power up and then confirm. Now or never unlocked. Also remind that your character doesn't need to be neither max level nor have its skill tree leveled up for the prestige ability to be able to be unlocked. If you plan carefully and save enough duplicates until you can evolve, then you'll be killing two birds with one stone, not only evolving your character to a higher tier, but also upgrading its prestige ability. As you can see right here, her prestige goes from level 4 to level 20. Something super important to note is that a character's prestige ability goes from level 2 all the way to level 100. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do I level up a prestige ability? The answer is simple, the same way you unlock them, by sacrificing duplicates of that same variant. And this is where comes a very hard to swallow pill, is the fact that a character's prestige level increments are entirely dependent on their natural tier. That means that the higher tier characters require less sacrifices to reach its maximum prestige ability level. How big is the difference you might be asking? Well, <laughs> just allow me to show you. For bronze, you will need 50 copies. Although that is a lot of fodder, you'll definitely be getting a lot of bronzes whenever you open relics. So, although it's a little time consuming, uh, it's definitely doable in the long run. For silver, the number goes down to 25 copies. Once again, lots of duplicates, but you'll be getting them before you know it. In most cases, at least. But we'll get into that later. Now, for gold, you need 10 extra copies. And considering you already need 5 to promote a gold to diamond rank, then I guess it's not so bad. That is, if we are talking about the golds available through price fight rewards, because otherwise you'll need a lot of luck to be able to get all 10 copies needed to reach maximum prestige level. We also gotta take into account the fact that exclusive golds exist. Not only Inner Pieces Eliza, but also 5 other Elemental Relic exclusive golds. You will need to gamble a lot to be able to reach maximum prestige level with these characters, or with these variants, I mean. But don't worry guys, this is not a gacha game. Finally, you'll need to be really lucky or really unlucky to get 5 extra copies of a diamond variant to maximize its prestige level. Considering there are already a lot of diamond variants, and the number will only get higher by each new version, then I consider this is going to take a really long while. With the technical explanation out of the way, let's just get right into how do you use them, because as I said at the beginning of the video, prestige abilities are active skills, meaning that you have to actively use them, you have to activate them during battle, mid-match if you will. But before you activate them, you have to charge them. Now, every character has a unique way of charging its prestige ability. 
We will get into that later. As you can see right above me, once you unlock the prestige ability of any given variant, this portrait will get uh, those little ornaments or leaves, if you will, whatever you want to call them. They aren't entirely ornamental because each little set of leaves represents about 20% of your prestige ability charge meter. I guess I forgot to say that prestige abilities charge from 0% all the way to 100%. You fully charge your prestige ability is when you will be able to activate it. You can't activate it unless it's at 100%. Once it's finally charged then you can activate it simply by pressing your character's icon. Just imagine that you are tagging into them. Here we go. Your character will do its taunt, then you get sort of like a freeze moment, just like when you activate a blockbuster. And then that means that your prestige ability is fully in effect. Now that we got the general explanation out of the way, let's finally get into each and every character unique prestige ability. I will tell you how to charge them, which variants benefit the most, and anything else that I can think of. So let's just get right into it. Any lights, camera, we. You charge that ability by simply spending star power meter. There are many ways to spend star power meter, such as turning it on, using a plethora of special moves, or simply letting time pass while in star power mode. You'll need to spend a cumulative amount of 50% star power meter before you can activate your prestige ability. Once activated, all of your star power stars will deal extra damage. You can also charge your prestige ability by simply doing this. Now, with this information, we can safely assume that the variants that benefit the most from her prestige ability are those that directly interact with her star power meter. There is one, however, that reigns supreme. And that is Timeless Hero. Timeless Hero has the easiest time achieving unlimited star power. Not only that, but her game plan mostly revolves around her not only achieving unlimited star power, but also taking all the advantage that you can out of it. Moving on. You charge this ability every time you enter hype mode. To enter hype mode, first you'll need to accumulate 3 hype charges, which can be done by either using wolf shoot on your opponent, hunting your opponent, successfully throwing your opponent, or finishing your air combo. You'll also gain one hype charge every time 30 seconds have passed into the match. Notice that you aren't able to hold any more than 3 hype charges, and notice that you won't be able to gain another hype charge if you begin your move while you are still in hype mode. You will only need to enter hype mode twice to fully charge your prestige ability. Once activated, whenever you are in hype mode you will get a damage boost that increases for every 20 seconds elapsed into the match. So theoretically, Beowulf has finally entered the Infinite Damage Club. Welcome aboard! So, it seems to me that barons that benefit the most from this prestige ability are those that either want to be grabbing you as much as possible, and even more so, those that want to be or enter hype mode as much as possible. With that being said, I still think that the baron that benefit the most from his prestige ability is none other than Burger King Food Lettuce. The reason being that there is currently no other Beowulf variant whose signature ability is entirely dependent on how much damage is he dealing. Up next, Big Bang. Back on the heat. You charge this ability every time you or your opponent get hit by the 10 hit of any given combo. Keep in mind that the receiving character has to be alive in order for the prestige ability to charge. Here is a very easy universal combo that will let you instantly charge your prestige ability. Keep in mind that it only works on the corner. Once activated, all of your D1s will get a chance to become unblockable and grant you a stack of rage at the same time. Something very interesting to note is that despite his D1 and his Take the A Train Super being virtually the same move, the latter won't benefit from his prestige ability. Another cool fact is that simply dashing along distance will trigger his prestige ability. So, high combo counts and unblockable dash attacks. There's only a handful of big bands that fit this archetype nicely, 
but out of the three that do, I believe the big band that benefits the most from his possessibility is none other than the Epic Sax. <laughs> the reason being is that he is already geared towards attack, and he gains access to things that he didn't previously had, thus complementing his kit. I swear I'm not biased. Next one. Serbala. Can't turn down the fan. You charge this ability every time you or your opponent get thrown. Keep in mind that throwing and grabbing is not the same thing. Now, there are a lot of moves which are considered throws, but I'm not gonna get into that. Alright, pay attention. <laughs> Got photo boob. Red will serve a combo finisher, Aether Wolf, Well Shoot, Gekki Strap Back, but only in High Mode, Lupin Puma, Wolf Omenia, both charge twice when using High Mode, Take the A Train, Kimpani Drama Horse, Merry Gorilla, X Rebella, Diamond Drop, Ultimate Showstropper, Grab Back, Peace of Jihina, Gun Blades, Weight of Anubis, Neck Breaker, Wood of Speed, Blowout, Benford Drive, Arm Embrace, Inevitable Snuggle, Head Over Heroes, Twice Shy, No 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 No, Fear of Dismember, Fractal Reaper, Blue Trasher, Canopy Bounce, Sacred Model, God Fellows, Good Fellow, Assault Battery, Magnetic Trap, the Super Core, Desi Pusher, Drag and Drop, Ratio of the Drive, Mortal Drawl, and Hand to Me, and Dead of Arrival. Not to mention every character's normal throw. Once activated, the more health percentage remaining that your opponent has, the more damage your throws will deal. Something very interesting is that her precision ability will charge even when throwing a dead opponent. Although throwing your opponent is something that most Arabella variants want to be doing a lot of the time, there's a trio of variants with signature ability greatly synergized with this, and the one that benefits the most from the Persisha ability is Criminal Mind. Once again, her signature ability is entirely dependent on the damage that she is dealing, thus she is the one that benefits the most from a direct damage increase. On to the next one. Double! <laughs> you charge this ability every time you transmute, which is basically changing Double's element. To do this, you'll simply need to hold a block for a full uninterrupted second. Keep in mind that the transmutation timer continues even when time is frozen. Once activated, Double will increase the damage that she deals at an elemental advantage. Transmuting and dealing more damage are certainly things that most doubles will appreciate. This few, however, will certainly appreciate it even more. <laughs> Out of these ones, the one that will appreciate it most is Temple Tyrant. Not only she gets a much needed damage boost, but she also has insane synergy with her signature ability. I hope that maybe one day we look at Temple Tyrant the same way that we look at Nonsense. Very, very niche, but very, very good once she feels that niche. Next, please. Oh, I'm sad. Let's dance, darling. You charge this ability every time you enter Segment Mode. At the time of writing, the only way to enter Segment Mode is to use either Segment Fury, Segment Turn, Segment Spite, or Lady of Slaughter. Once activated, all of your Segment's normals will get a chance to remove one opponent buff and restore 5% of your health. Here's a quick universal combo that will let you fully charge your prestige ability. Keep in mind that you will need both Sekhmet's Turn and Sekhmet's Fury fully charged before storing it. Also keep in mind that it only works in the corner. You know, it's kinda funny. You never realize how many Eliza variants entirely depend on Sekhmet, on you using Sekhmet mode to trigger their signature abilities. Well, that may be the case, there's only one Eliza variant with signature ability entirely depends on you utilizing Sekhmet's normals, instead of just the blockbuster part. And that is easily Diva Intervention. You know how the saying goes. The cheesier get cheesier. Let's continue. Phil yeah. Let's go, Sim Sim. Hell yeah. You charge this ability every time you or your opponent get counter hit. Wait a minute, how am I gonna show it? Right, this is better. You charge this ability every time you or your opponent get counter hit. You will know a counter hit has happened because the receiving character will not only flash red, but also a broken heart will appear right next to them. Once activated, not only will you get a chance to inflict death more when counter hitting your opponent, but you will also become fully intangible to projectiles when dashing forward. Once again, there are a lot of moves which are considered projectiles. So here's the list of everything that Phila will be able to pass through when benefiting from her prestige ability. I hope you catch all of that. Let's not beat too much around the bush. I don't think Philia variants have that much synergy with her prestige ability, but they are still variants that can definitely make it work. And the one that will get the most profit out of it is that Miss Frosty. 
First of all, being a crit based Philia, she has synergy with Deathmark, and the fact that her damage doesn't come from Bleed just makes this even sweeter. Let's keep this up. Fuqua. Here we come. You charge this ability every time you or your opponent use a blockbuster. I don't think there's both a universal and optimal combo that will let you chain her four blockbusters, so you'll have to settle for this. Once activated, not only will you inflict a 5 second heal block, but you will also drain a percentage of your opponent's blockbuster meter every time you use a blockbuster. So, meter control. All of Fuku's variants can easily make this prestige ability work, even more so because most of her variants already have some sort of synergy with her prestige ability. Knowing this, we can easily say that the variant that benefits the most from this prestige ability is Phantom Threads. This because her single ability doesn't rely on Miasma, so she gets access to meter control, and with Phantom Threads we already want to be spamming blockbusters as much as possible, so there's that. Let's go! Misfortune. You charge this ability by moving, and uh, the Mega long story short, this literally means either changing your X or Y position. Keep in mind that both her body and head movements charge her prestige ability and they do so independently. Once activated, you'll simply gain a stack of evasion and inflict Gordrick on your opponent every few seconds. I don't even think there's a need for an explanation here. Alright, full disclosure, all of her variants benefit from her prestige ability and the one that benefits the most is Claw on Order, because just imagine a misfortune with 5 stacks of guard break. Buckle up. Pain will. You charge this ability every time you or your opponent gets struck by a critical hit. Once again, keep in mind that the receiving character has to be alive in order for the prestige ability to charge. It's also important to know that with enough crit rate you'll be able to charge this prestige ability in one fell swoop. Once activated, every time you use a blockbuster you will also inflict your opponent with one stack of card break. So, this prestige ability pretty much gives you another reason to never want to hit pain wheel with a critical hit. With this in mind, and also taking into consideration that there are only two pain wheels that are focused around crit rate, the variant that benefits the most from the prestige ability is easily Freaky Friday. The reasons are simple, she already wants to be hitting you as much as possible, and she is not horrible. Alright, we're almost done. Parcel, eager to get ready. You charge this prestige ability every time you spawn a tier, which can be done by either successfully landing a D2, an SD, a grab, or simply after performing an air combo finisher using Napalm Toss, using Napalm Shot, and using Napalm Shower. Once activated, Parcel will gain one stack of precision every time she spends some time near her tiers. Keep in mind that this effect is not stackable, meaning that regardless of the number of tiers that you have near you, you will only get one stack of precision per thing. So, without making things too complicated, almost all parcels have some sort of synergy with either spawning as much tiers as possible or with critical hits. And you usually don't want to be detonating your tiers at all. With that said, there's only one parcel variant that fills these requirements while at the same time never ever wants to detonate her tiers. And that is Shadow Ops. So now she inflicts curse, she gains horns, and she also gains precision, which is absolutely broken. Precision, I mean. Oh, so continuing the march or whatever, I'm running out of things to say. Peacock! What the hell is she saying? You charge this ability every time you or your opponent deal projectile damage. Huge emphasis on the deal damage part. Because if either of you takes zero damage from a projectile, then it won't contribute any charge. Once activated, you will get a chance to gain either precision, enrage, or haste every time you use a special move. As usual, here is a universal combo that will let you completely charge your prestige ability. Keep in mind that it only works in the corner. Despite most peacocks having a very easy time charging this prestige ability, there are only three peacocks that, that have unrivaled synergy with it. And the one out of those three that benefits the most from this prestige ability is surprisingly wild card. This is because although ideally you want to be spamming special moves as much as possible, she is the one that has the most potential using special moves mid-combo, as opposed to at the end of the combo or at the beginning of a combo. Alright, just three more! Robo Fortune! Beep boop meow! 
You charge this prestige ability every time you gain a buff or you inflict your opponent with a debuff. Once again, keep in mind that you have to be the one to inflict the debuff, so match modifiers and self inflicted debuffs and the like won't charge it. Now, upon activation you will instantly gain 5 stacks of precision, and once activated you will be able to reflect a percentage of the incoming damage for every buff you or your opponent are currently benefiting from. Keep in mind that unlike most other prestige abilities, this ability caps at 100% reflected damage. Alright, so let's get a bit around the bush. This prestige ability's main use is gonna be for defense. Sure, you can't underestimate having 5 stacks of precision with the mere press of a button. At the same time, the raw fortunes that already benefit from precision have some sort of innate way of getting it. And the ones that don't won't become completely broken just because of this. So, after taking all of this into consideration, I gotta say that the variant that benefits the most from the precision ability is Blue Screen. Now, you might be asking yourself, is an overclock better? And while I certainly will agree with that statement, I gotta say that we also gotta take into account availabil avail availability. First of all, overclock is a diamond, while blue screen is a gold. Secondly, blue screen is available to everyone as a reward for her prize fight. And third and final, and this isn't related to availability anymore, but regardless, it's almost impossible for blue screen to not gain any buffs. Not only will she gain them regardless of how often are you hitting her, being a water element she has way more synergy with catalysts and the like than overclock a little dream to, to have. The buff we are almost done. Squiggly! Ready? You're a hoe! You charge this prestige ability every time you either gain or you spend a dragon charge. If you want to know more about the ins and outs of dragon charging and even squiggly as a whole, be sure to check out the series of videos I did on her. All links will be in the description. But enough about self promoting. Upon activation, all currently defeated opponents will become permanently killed for the remainder of the match. This means that they won't be able to be revived no matter what. After that, you will be able to gain a full dragon charge simply by standing next to a corpse. Once again, not that many variants have synergy with this prestige ability. That being said, the effect is still very strong. Not only that, but the variants that do have synergy with it already have some pretty strong effects of their own. This, and as I already predicted before, the squiggly variant that benefits the most from her prestige ability is easily and obviously. No, not you! Get the hell out of here! Nobody's gonna spend like five years to max out your prestige ability. Sorry about that. As I was saying, the variant blah 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 benefits the most is Bio Exorcist. TLDR, she can finally be played as an optimal squiggly without sacrificing her drain percentage HP sentinel ability thingy. And now the beginning of the end. Valentine! Time to operate. You charge this prestige ability every time you Oh no, not again. Alright, so you charge this prestige ability every time you recover health. Something very important to keep in mind is that this prestige ability is currently the buggiest or the glitchiest, whatever, whatever word is more appropriate. Not only does getting hit after getting killed charge it, but also some forms of revives will also charge it. Once again, upon activation, our current related teammates will revive with a little bit of health, and Valentine will turn into a splitting image's little sister, passively regenerating a little bit of health over time. So once again, this seems like a pretty defense-oriented prestige ability, while at the same time having some potential and attack as a safety net. As such, I decided to include in the list of variants that benefit from this prestige ability only the Valentine variants that have some sort of innate way of regenerating health. Furthermore, the variant that benefits the most from this prestige ability is not Assassin's Creed, but Last Hope. Yes, the Valentine variant that everybody seems to be flipping on. If you are befuddled, then I suggest paying more attention, because as I already said before, Valentine's prestige ability is currently and most likely glitched. So when you revive being the point character, you also charge your prestige ability. And as such, when Last Hope dies, she will instantly charge your whole prestige ability. And aside from blocking her revive via hexing or the like, there's currently no way for you to avoid her prestige ability from charging. So yeah, I guess enjoy it while it lasts. I hope you enjoyed the explanation. We are almost done here, there are just some little things that I think still need to be talked about. Here is a quick recap. Prestige abilities are active skills that need to be unlocked and then charged during battle can also be leveled up, and this is usually not a big deal unless you are trying to max out the prestige of one of the elusive eight. Just in case you didn't know, 
The elusive 8 are what I personally refer to to the current 8 fighters that have some sort of exclusivity attached to them. These are the 5 goals unique to every elemental relic, inner pieces Eliza which can only be acquired via golden gifts, oh my Valentine which can only be acquired via the daily relic, and Necro Breaker, which can only be acquired via special events. Prestige ability levels are not transferable, so careful planning is usually required. The way that the AI interacts with prestige ability usage is as follows. On offense, they will deem the activation an unsafe move and will usually try to punish, giving you a free reversal opportunity. On defense, they will usually try to use stairs as soon as it is charged and they get some breathing room. So you should try your best to not drop your pressure. Remember that phrase I said at the beginning of the video? Every character has a unique prestige ability that simplifies your innate traits and playstyle. There are certain times where I believe this is a little too shoehorned in, such as with Beowulf, and there are other times where I believe this doesn't really fit, such as with Philia. Now I'm gonna explain both examples. With Beowulf you'll have to be in hype mode as much as possible, otherwise you're missing out on a huge increase in damage. With Philia, I never really thought about her as a counter-hitting crit-based fighter that faces through projectiles. I also gotta talk about the fact that some prestige abilities are just too good to ignore. I personally don't really like the merging of characters making them more powerful, since it just really... Um, amplifies the more pay-to-win aspects of certain games. Lastly, I originally wanted to talk about this more in depth, but the more and more I think about it, I feel like a quick explanation should do the trick just as efficiently. Sometimes it's better to have two copies of a really strong variant rather than unlock the prestige ability of one. For example, I have two standouts. As we know, she is a really strong variant. Besides, Elias's prestige ability is not particularly overpowered or anything. So, as I was saying, sometimes it's not worth it to sacrifice a really strong variant just to have a slightly stronger copy of it. At the same time, I feel like this should be judged in a case-by-case -case basis. Not only for the variants themselves, but also for the players. Let's set another example. A free-to-play player may want to have a full team of Assassin's Creed, while on the other hand, a paying player may want to completely max out the prestige ability of one Assassin's Creed because he know he will get more copies to finish the team and eventually max out the prestigious as well down the line. So... I think that is everything for today. I think. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really sure. And again, I'm not really good with goodbyes. So thank you for watching if you did. I guess I'll see you next time. Remember, share the video, like the video, subscribe to the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think, all of that good stuff. But before I go, let me just put another sticker on the wall. Just because. There we go. It's a little bit tilted, but uh, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do with what you have. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Shout out Sam Ahmed Kirby, shout out Level T, shout out. Uh, Everyone else, what I forgot and helped me with the making of this video, uh... I don't know. Goodbye! <laughs> I'm also pretty sure that I may or may not have missed something. But, uh, I'll probably only remem remember what it is until I publish the video, so... Whatever. <laughs> ciao, ciao! This time for real!